fella. My man. Ah, uh, we got the G4 stuff on Looking here, eh? Looking sharp again. Right after the U.S. Open, which we're going to get right into here, but this is nice, eh? For the big nice. boys. That fits you well, by the way. Yeah. By the, the way, you're looking, you're looking good, Obes. Yeah, down, uh, not that anyone gives a fuck besides my mom and dad out there, but uh, down 27. That, I mean. 27 more to go. I give a fuck. That's great for you. 27 I'm your, more I'm to go. boy. I like to see yeah. you fucking nice and tuned up for the for the summer. Yeah, nice. Yeah. got to get the tan, eh? Well, the tan you're working on. It looks coming. like you got some sun at the LACC there this week. Yeah, I'm starting to peel a bit. Forgot to put sunscreen on, eh? <laughs> peel and trim. Peel Seven and fucking tequila shots later, and I'm like, oh, I forgot to put sunscreen on. I can't wait to get it. I haven't really talked to you about much of the open. I can't wait to yeah, hear Yeah, I just wanted to say for the big boys out there that these do fit the big boys. I remember we were talking about it on our Stanley Cup final recap, but I wanted to prove it. So you're looking good. Thank you. I uh, I actually picked this puppy up at the Big Canyon Pro Shop. I see the little logo on the side there. Yeah, yeah. It was... Uh, I came in after nine one day and I wasn't quite feeling it, so I needed a new outfit. Speaking of Big Canyon, there were, there was some Big Canyon chat around my social media. Really? So there was a fifty two shot on the first day of the ball, ball the, the ball member ball. guest a fifty two on a, just a straight up best ball fifty two. Guy's a seventeen handicap. He made a th- twenty no, under a number. Yeah, <clears throat> on number eight he made a three. I was like a twenty handicap. I've been a member at Big Canyon for seven years. I don't think I've birdied number eight. He made a three for a one. He made two birdie net ones. This guy, whoever it was, die. It was die and this other member. He's not, they're not allowed back. <laughs> but I'll anyways, I throw that out there right now. I said to the boys, <clears throat> I go, boys, Big Kane is getting some love on social media about this 52. So I guess it was a little. Yeah. Yeah. I guess 52 watch. Yeah. Not for the right reasons. No not one, for the right reasons. No one believes you if you're shooting 52. Do you wish you would have played in the Balboa at all or? Um, I, I miss the ball. I love the Balboa. You do. Love a good member guest at our club. It's, uh, it's, it's always a great week. You know, I'm a, you know returning champion so you, you get a little love yeah, your pitcher is up there during you covid know, I, for three I, I don't fucking quite years get the, the green jacket or anything like that but you got your uh, picture up there got it well it was up there for quite a while yeah. because of covid i got to keep it up an extra year i was like telling the guys to take it take down. it down. i know like, you were enough, I know. Enough you here. I see, I see, Blaine's mug. i've seen this guy for two years and it was during covid so you're already kind of crusty i gotta see blaino's face every time i go to my golf club i know that that no that <laughs> uh, it could be a reason to take it down alone but uh i did miss it but for good reason, I had a great weekend, and uh, we'll get into that in Uppy's world here shortly. But I got uh, an idea for uh, we we should have a second member guest, right? The Balboa is the traditional one forever. Have a smaller one, two day or nine hole matches with a horse race, two days in and out. Maybe get on uh, the committee. The, the yeah, maybe I will. The second we need member another guest member guest. We need a littler member guest. Littler is that the right word? Yeah, smaller. Well. The, well Bel Air has the little pro. Yeah, it's there not we go. the swinging bridge. It's called the little pro. We'll call it the swinging dick. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we could call it the little ditch. Yeah, the little ditch. Because it's called Big Canyon. It's called the ditch. The little ditch. Or the, yeah. The big bitch. <laughs> the, little, the little ditch. The little ditch, maybe. I don't know. I think we need another little smaller member guest. I think if you, let's ask uh, one of those AI things to write up a full member guest tournament. We'll tell them what we want. Put it at Big Canyon. It'll look like a proper letter. And we'll go in and we'll go. Hand it right to the membership committee. Let's eh? go. Right to the boys. Give them the dates that work for us. What would be a good date? Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Because um, this one's in June. September. September. Great time. September. Fall, yeah, it's sunny. perfect in California. Still get, you still get a nice, like, sun, you know. A lot of sun left. Get, a lot of sun left. Yeah. It's pretty sunny. It's it's sunny late now, eh? Like, I'm, I'm, I just said, well, you know, you're getting old. Eh? It's like eight o'clock. I'm ready. Like, I'm like, and the sun's still sunny up. late. I'm it's like, fucking pretty sunny early. I don't late. have great blinds in my room. And this morning, that surprises me. I got back. Yeah, no, there's a lot of windows in my house. Got back and um, we call that natural lighting, Bing. It was fucking. If you're ever looking five, for a house, five forty-five. I'm fucking looking outside and I'm like, God, this is like now it's this is real life <laughs> shit. My kids are still sleeping, so I'm like, what do I, you know, what do I do? Give me some blackouts. Did you, did you jerk off? No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. What'd you do? I Take was a having sh- a couple <laughs> good dreams, though. I tell you that. I don't. You know, after a good weekend, I was having some. Yeah, there was. Oh, I used to, we're going to get into your uppies, yeah, bro. I'll okay. tell you about my dreams after. <laughs> uh, let's do a U.S. Open at L.A. Country Club. I went up Saturday. Shout out to Dennis Shannon, Citrus Motors. Um, <clears throat> had a sick setup on 14. Me, him, Thomas J. Doherty the third. I thought L.A. Country Club was beautiful. Listen, on the Thursday, anybody that's lived in Southern California, we haven't seen the sun in three fucking months. So for them to think that it was going to burn, burn away on the Thursday, it never did. And they just obviously a couple 62s. But after the first day, it bit back. I thought the atmosphere was good on Saturday. Um, unfortunately, Max Holman missed the cut. <coughs> Who else? Phil missed the cut. 
Who'd you pick, Brooksy? I had Kepka and Max Homa. Um, Kepka was right there. He just couldn't <coughs> couldn't quite get his game together. He had a bad start. He, started- he had a terrible start, but then he got to minus three. And then it was a couple double bogeys down the stretch. And we, we should have listened to his caddy. We knew he wasn't quite feeling his driver, and we, we he, bet him anyway. He was four over through six or something on uh, Thursday. Uh, I know, right off the, so right out of the gate. And he had been, Rory beside him making birdies. I know. If he could have just played even par, he would have been right there again. Yeah. Because what he did finish, I think, three or four under or something like that. Yeah, he finished point. in the top 20, I think. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't Brooks Kepka U.S. Open-like, right? A yeah. guy that's got two already, you know, he... he I think he he explained playing there too as like he'd rather just play there to play. Yeah, not it wasn't to play a big a tournament. Fan of the course, yeah. There's a lot of mixed emotions on some players talking about the atmosphere there. What yeah. do you think of the atmosphere? Matt Fitzpatrick's worried about how many people are in there. Like easy there, but I mean yeah. there was enough people. Odds are he probably many, doesn't ever win another one, right? How many people do you want in there? I, yeah. I thought there was enough people, but that was a guy that was there that didn't feel like I was crowded. Yeah, you don't want to be crowded because you can watch golf. But I think the the players think a U.S. Open is just a a nutty like Ryder Cup experience, right? Well, Just it was definitely fans. a different atmosphere. Like you go out to number six <clears throat> and I mean, it's LA, everyone's stoned, right? <laughs> they're all sitting on the grass, like they're at a music festival yeah, like and, then, and they're baked. Yeah. yeah. It's not like going to New York or fucking. No, where they're all, where they're all know, drunk. Where they're drunk and fucking <laughs> doing whatever in the park and I'm looking to get in a fight. <laughs> I got something in my throat here. <laughs> 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 Sorry. That's okay. No, we but anyways, we, don't need to edit this we were on number six and, and, and they're like, you know, Dennis and Tom are like, yeah, that's not the atmosphere I thought. I said, well, look around. Yeah. Everyone spent fucking a million dollars for they're these boxes. Fucking, they're eating weed gummies and fucking laying they're on the weed grass. Weed gummies and oysters. There's no one's here just crushing dogs and dude, burgers. grass angels, eh? Like, <laughs> like, it wasn't like, everyone was stoned. It's, it's LA. Like that's, but it still, to me, had a cool feel to it. Um, no, I agree. I, I got to watch it on TV. Um. I took it in from the Soho house in Nashville. What a spot. Looked great. What a spot. Like and I was, the course looked great. I wanted to say this to you, and we've, we've, you know, we've told a lot of people that hockey and golf go hand in hand. A lot of missing curfew fans at the LACC. A lot of where's the up dog? Yeah. So the up dog right now, if I had to guess, is doing a headstand at Bonnaroo if I had to put my money on I it. I was doing everything, but I actually didn't do one. You didn't do a headstand? No. That's but I did a lot when of you know you're getting a lot of other things. Um, I did, by the way, I did on the Friday afternoon at the pool at, at um, at what did I say? Soho house. Soho house, yeah. A little fucking brain damage from the weekend. I um <laughs> remember when we used to go for four days? Yeah. I got a up dog. Love the show. Big yeah. fan. And this is like Hipsterville, fucking Nashville, right? So I mean it carries a long way. Yeah, no, there's some yeah, I, and I've guys said like this. Binger that like our show. I mean, golf fans love ho- hockey and vice versa. So to the fans at LACC, thanks for the love. The up dog they were asking for you. Rory McElroy, God, he played great. When you drive the ball like that. And you, you know, you, you find tee to green so good and you just are slashing your putter. And your putts like me and loop will combine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you right? get so good. Man. I know. And you tee to green and you have, you know, looks from, you know, five to 25 feet all day long and you can't make one in these moments. I know. I mean, there's a reason why he hasn't won a major in nine, nine 10 years, years, right? Nine thought- years because. You just got to dial it in. Like I, I thought about Tiger Woods on that last day. I thought about Tiger in his prime when he's 31, 32 years old, coming down the stretch and knowing the moment, knowing the moment and fucking stepping up and making the right play. It's like, you know, it's like watching fucking who, Jack Eichel on, in the Stanley Cup, watching guys just understanding like, these are the moments I live for. This is why I've trained. Make a putt. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I mean, it's a tough sport, but. When you're at that level, Obes, you got to find a way to just. I took him at plus 300 on DraftKings app, on the DraftKings app. I'm at plus 300 after after 36. I took him for another G note, trying to get my money back from Max Homa missing the cut. And he had all he he led the lead, he led the the U.S. opening greens regulation fairways hit like he led in every stat that typically you're going to win this thing. He just couldn't putt. He didn't make a putt over four foot over four feet on Sunday. I don't he think. drove the ball to Malibu. Yeah, he drove it like 380. Yeah, I know. Three, it was crazy. Right, were, yeah, it was piped. I would like to see you play the 14th hole there. It's 600 yards. Right there, Playboy Mansion there, Tory Spelling's house right there. Love to play that. 600 me. yards. Is that where they teed it off from in the back? 600, yeah. I was just sitting right there in the bar having a nice time, eh? Where was the bar set up? Behind the green? No, right in the fairway. The fairway's oh, on the left 400 side. yards. Over. Yeah, 40 yeah, yards so wide. You were, you were behind that like tree area on the, yeah. on the so left side. So if they tugged the it, if you're a right-handed driver like myself, up against for, your... so for you, if you pushed it left... It was right there. And the rough was like, 
Yeah. Right to the bottom. It was crazy. Wow. That course looked so mint. Like the greens, man, it was, I couldn't imagine what we would have shot. What, uh, what did Wyndham Clark do on that hole? On the fucking Sunday, birdied. He, he hit that three wood cut, right? Boom. Oh, and he landed it on the green. Yeah. And he two made, putt made birdie. Four. Yeah. Rory makes six. That's the tournament. And then Wyndham let him back in. That little 15th hole, you, I don't know if you remember from when we played there, but it's time. Like it was yeah. such a great little atmosphere. It was playing 78 yards. Yeah. On Sunday, I think it was playing, or 78 yards on Saturday, 130 on Sunday. Cool atmosphere because you had 14 green right there and then 15 T right here. It was like a shit show. So Wyndham bogeyed that one, bogeyed 16 to let Rory back in on Sunday, and Rory couldn't make a birdie on 17 or 18. Although he tried on 17. What a shot from yeah. number two fairway where I would have been. I'll tell you what, his bogey on 16 could have been a double Wyndham's. Big time. I, I mean, he, he I shoveed the first one. And then, I mean, wow. Yeah, there was a clutch down the stretch. Wow. Clutch. clutch. Um, Wyndham Clark, 3.6 bananas. Rory McIlroy, 2.1 bananas. Your boy, Scotty Scheffler, 1.4 bananas. Cameron Smith, 990. How are you? How's that for four days of yeah, having to wear your slacks out there? And Hey, Cameron Smith, uh, by the way, bigger than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, a little, I think got, a little a little, Aussie. got a little bit of. I a, told you the boys get some boilers. Boiler. The little boilers are real thing. You could tell that he likes his Australian beer, as he or should. Or the bat blue. Let's say that even better. Well, he he's got a British blue. Open, right? So he's got. Yeah, he's defending next month. Are we going to be over there for that? Uh, no, 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 we're not. We're not. But uh, I thought LACC was great. U.S. Open, put it on the bucket list, up dog. I don't know if I'll ever go again because it's so much more fun to watch on television. I agree. But it, it was a great day. So uh, without further ado, up his world. Party, Party time. time. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, buddy. I'm still, All right, here we go, I'm boys. still buzzing. Bonnaroo. I still got a buzz going. I'm just going to throw my mic away. Huh? Well, oh, it was so good. Was it good? I had a blast. I mean, listen, you know, much different than I than I had ever experienced before. Well, I Maybe guess a little say. different than it used to be. Yeah. Do I even have to explain why? <laughs> I mean, did not I, to me, you know. Did I fucking look around about <laughs> six different times during my morning jacket and go, where the fuck are my boys at? <laughs> Christina was laughing and I'm, you know, I was just feeling it, obviously. Oh, I know, there I there was a good mix. Let's just say I had the right mix going. Yeah. And, um, potent, potent. You know, Jimmy fucking came out Jimmy! and was just on fire. What was he wearing? Did he have the towel on his head? He had on just a nice jacket and was fucking like a little suit coat and was buzzing around. Did he put the towel on his head at all? I like when he does uh, that. Yeah, he did. I like when he does that. Yeah, he did that he for wordless starts, course. Bow, yeah, it was bow, it was juicy. Bow. Um, you know, it was just it was a highlight. But, but, you, but the whole day was great. Listen, thank you to Getzloff who gave me his sprinter van. He did. He gave me the sprinter. He's Holy moving out there fuck. next week. Uh, we had her cleaned up. I had uh, two of my boys there drive it. I gave him passes. They you ran had drivers around. in Nashville. Do you? Fuck yeah. How do you guys, how'd you find those They guys? had beers, tequila. They muddled some jalapenos for Christina. We had the soda. I had fucking I fresh you, ice. Hope you tipped them. Oh yeah. I got, fuck, come on, man. Where'd I, you find the drivers in Nashville? Yeah, Brandon Walker's kid. List? Oh, Brandon Walker's kid. Yeah. Good gotcha. guy. So thank you for those boys. Walks. What a beauty. Yeah. Robbie. Thank you. Um, so listen, we went out there about two 30. I had a great platinum pass. Shout out to Dan Berkowitz, my boy, and Weinstock. They hooked us up. Love Weinstock. And then, uh, listen, I, I started off. I saw this uh, Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow was, was there? Great. Cheryl Crow played main stage. No shit. So we hit her first, and then we went, and I saw this girl, Remy Wolf, who played this like reggae fucking hip hop. It was badass. I'm sure Binger might like her. And then um, Sophie so Tucker. She's a hippie? I saw Elderbrook. I saw Bob Moses. And then by the way, I ran into, so Jimmy from Bob Moses, he's there. He's there like key, the p keyboard, keyboard, keyboard guy. I'm just going to play the Cheryl Croak song here. I haven't heard it. Yeah, in a play while. it. Ding, ding. Oh yeah. There you go. Buddy, she's 61 yeah, she's, and she looks amazing. By the way, remember we were talking about um, Woodstock when it went sideways? Yeah. She was, she was like, there. That's what she was blowing up. And then the guys were yelling at her, like, show I'll us your you, tits. Listen, and she, she I'll tell you who was there from Woodstock was Corn played. Corn was another fucking reason that Korn place played there. Bananas. The, they played. I love Same Korn. time as My Morning Jacket. Um, Those are two different much. experiences. Yeah, right there. I didn't. Let's just say I was, I was in MMJ. But um, Corn's great, though. Eddie Green saw Freak my boy Eddie Green. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just sit here all day and turn this into a music <laughs> podcast. Um, listen, much different than before. Wow. Like the kids, our youth, like 
I don't know what to say about them. They're 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 a little mixed up out there. Their, their, their mentality wasn't the same mentality that we had. You like uh, the love? The love is all in the crowd, but the the way that there was a lot of love around us too. Yeah, no, I know totally. <laughs> Just a different different atmosphere at the music festival. Just different atmosphere now. All the same smiles, the laughter, the fucking weirdness. The guys passed out face first in the ground. Yeah, try not to step on. Um, you know, get, it, an adventure when you walk through the middle, when you walk up the spine and you're going one side to the other. We went and got merch and fucking bought some hats. Got Izzy, you know, tank top. And we, we buzzed around. I like to show Christina the whole thing. Took a picture in front of the Marigold, you know, the, yeah, yeah, the Ferris, Ferris wheel. wheel. Car- Is it a Ferris wheel? Um, Ferris wheel? But I mean, highlights are like driving around in the golf carts. Getting were, pinned. Were you on the golf cart? A couple people recognized me. They're like, hey, you're back. And I'm like, yeah, it's so fucked. Did nice you have to full golf cart yeah, access? Yeah, we had everything. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, we had nice. everything. Private viewing in all the areas. You cannot get a better experience than the platinum access that they have, which used to be roll like a rock star for you and me. The way you walk into the show and have prime time, middle of the stage, 100 feet back, bar set up there, pissers over here. And then you walk right to the golf cart and they're taking you to the next show. You don't miss anything. Oh, it's, it's I mean, perfect. It was literally the first festival I went to. I think I went to Bonnaroo before Coachella. Yeah. And it ruined all my other festivals. Like I was like Bonnaroo and obviously we paid for it, but it was the setup was nationally beyond. So Odessa Obes played this show and they shot fucking rockets and fireworks into the sky. And it, you, know, the, you know, I love that band. They killed I. it. Like a, a good, solid musical experience. They had probably 20 drummers out there. They with did the, the pyro the glow shows, on those glows. Yeah, the masks yeah. and all that shit. These guys killed it. They're, if no one's ever seen that band, their production is the best of all time. Um, you know, and then we stayed in fucking till like 4, 4.30 in the morning. Like we're in the jungle. Yeah. We, we, I call it the jungle. That's you should our, see the creatures our, that were in there. That's when our after These party would just fucking, start. 4 a.m. Yeah. So back where we used to tent yeah, now I got that is down where here. Bob Moses and Elderbrook played this set till 4.30 in the morning. And it's on a spaceship in the back of the woods. And you just, for 10 minutes, you're walking through and like, you know, not trying to step on people and there's hammocks everywhere. And then there's, you know, they lit it up like a, like kind of like an enchanted forest that we had. But I mean, the costumes it and was the fucking people story. that are whacked out of their mind. Uh, it was crazy. That's why we loved it. Um, did you go by where the tour bus was and just do a moment of silence? I did. I did. I had a moment of silence. silence? Yeah. yeah. So at the very end of the night, I, I was sitting there and we're just talking about leaving for the first time. I'm like, Christina knew not to ask me to like leave ever because yeah. I didn't want to. And um, I'm sitting there and I'm just kind of looking around, kind of reminiscing this dude right beside me. And I, I, I don't remember his name. He looks at me. He goes... Do you remember when this was roll like a, and I look at him, I go, holy fuck you. And Cause I always used to see this dude first. I met him when he worked there and then he, I think he was a musician, but we watched this Tycho show one, one year. I remember Tycho band. I love, and he's like, watch the, go to Tycho tonight and watch the drummer. So of course I go into Tycho and I'm, I'm watching this fucking drummer just rip through this set. And he's there and I'm like, you were so right. That drummer's killer. So, I, so I'm like, did you recognize me? He's like, fuck yeah. And he's like, this forest used to be so fucking cool the way you guys used to come in here and party and do your thing. You guys set the whole stage for what Bonnaroo, you know, private experience, like the, to do whatever you wanted. It you, was guys, you guys set right. this, you guys set the stage for it. And now this is what it, look at what it turned into back here. It's kind of crazy. And I'm like, I'm like, man, it's wild to run into you, but yeah, it's fucking wild. And so Shout out to that kid if you're if you know I have a podcast and whatever. Yeah, it was fucking great running into you. Uh, a couple of my favorite things to do at Bonnaroo: uh, take a piss outside. Did you take a couple of pisses outside and just like look at the lights? Because that used to be one no, of my favorite. No, you things. couldn't really. No, you couldn't do that because we used to have the private. You bus couldn't area. piss out in the woods. No, yeah, it was oh, no. There's too many. I mean, too many. All right, well, there's a fucking bummer. <laughs> I crossed that off the list. You know no. when you're just mangled and you're pissing and you're looking up at the lights and you're like, ah, this is unreal, man. I can't well, wait to I get didn't back to the piss park. outside. You didn't take one piss outside. No, no, right. I did I'm right outside my bus, but not, right. not, not like in the woods where you, we used to. Well, no. you do have a big bladder. You usually you don't piss a lot. No, I don't. Okay. Next. Did you have a piece of spicy pie? I did not. Okay. Wasn't hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wasn't hungry. Over two. Over two. And then how was it hanging out with Bob Moses? It was great. Yeah. yeah I love Jim, those Jimmy guys, from man. Bob Moses is great. And he said, he had just, I got the invite. Shout out to these guys. They're fucking great. If no one's seen them. Good Vancouver lads. Yeah. Yeah. Vancouver. And they lived in New York for a while. And these guys are awesome. We've obviously been big fans for a while, but he, 
Fuck, he threw out the invite, Obes. He said fucking anytime. Did he say anytime? Yeah, he said anytime. Okay. They're going to San Diego, Palm Springs. I already have tickets to the Palm Springs show. But he said, come be my guest and we'll do it. I said, we can do a proper ripper. When's I Palm Springs? We should rent a sick house for that or something. It's September. Yeah. That'd fucking be mint. done, yeah. Um, and then my morning jacket. Well, what, what did they finish with? Or what was the encore? Uh, I forgot what, what they finished with, but they went. Did they um, play all the bangers? They played the bangers. Yeah. They'd start off Magita, oh, was chorus off the record right away, and then uh, Touch Me, I Want to Scream Part 2, which I just started I dancing around. Yeah, song. of course. It was so great. It was just a great, great time. Did you get? Did you wear a bandana? I had a bandana around my hand. I saw I you did. wore the missing curfew hat. Thanks for that. That's a good pub for the boys. Oh, yeah. I wore the, my morning jacket with the missing curfew hat. Yeah. I'm surprised you had a jacket on. I just remember me just sweating my balls off. No, there. I got chilly. It Thank did. God I, I told Christina like to bring some pants because at one point she had to go change because it was, yeah, it got like mid fifties at night. Did it do that back in the day or were I just so mangled that it would have been 50? No, like I, like I remember we used to put on like pants late night. We we're, did? Yeah, we used to wear, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, wow. or whatever, fucking set of jeans and a fucking uh, a panda bear onesie or something <laughs> like that. Like we'd bring costumes. I remember when Longer wore the one year where he had yeah. the fucking mask and the overalls and he was just jacked with his tats everywhere. I, I was like dancing at the show. I was like, holy fuck Longer. You so that me. late night bash though, people were coming through the forest in costumes and like there was a, there was two, there was two girls that walked by me and the guys they were with, they had the full zip ups with like little tiny faces and animals. And I'm like, see, these guys are doing Bonnaroo, right? Yeah. You know, you fucking, at the end of the night, you put on a nice little fucking comfy costume and you just hit the trees and just go rage until whenever. It just sucks that there's no bus anymore because it would be nice to just go back to the bus, even between yeah. a show, back to the bus. <laughs> Sit around. We'd have the sports on. Yeah, it's much, much different now how yeah. people are living in that. Like a lot of off-site camping now. Like it's like it's it. it's much different. Much different. Like Live it. Nation took it over, and it's lost its its charm in that way. But such as the city of Nashville in a whole, maybe you know it's so yeah, big now. Nashville's that it's lost changed that charm. big time. I do love it. Those no, great food. Great I mean, the city's beautiful and. um this area we stayed so i was just kind of like in in sort of the rougher buddy neighborhood. when we but played there you you probably wouldn't have went into where soul house was there was no. no reason no you wouldn't have went in there no I remember, unless you I remember were going, going to soul. finding you know some uh, sex <laughs> shop or a peep maybe show. try to get a bag of weed or something yeah. but like remember going to soul house for the first time the guy i'm like dude are you sure you're going the right way he's like yeah it's here i'm like i yeah. don't know man and sure enough boom. live nation there that's where they built their soccer stadium right down there live nation built a building they bought the old Nashville Sounds guitar that was in the outfield. Do you ever go watch a baseball game? Never there did, no. So great little minor league barn, but it had an old school guitar in the back. <laughs> Live Nation put that right beside Soho House, and it's it's all lit up. It looks badass. Um, uh, Nashville, I mean, I, I have a special place for Nashville. I'm going, oh, back we there, both do. going back there this weekend. I cannot believe you're flying back. This guy's doing overbacks across the country, eh? Here we go. Florida back, Nashville back, Nashville back, Spain back. I, I figure like if, I, if I do it's enough of them, I might get in shape again, maybe yeah, play yeah. next year. Uh, up dog, I'm glad you had a good time at the farm, fella. Your girl, she's officially, even though it wasn't four nights, I'll still one night she did it. She did it. She's officially part of the Bonnaroo crew. She's, she's licking her wounds off I today. She's got she two is. big blisters on her feet. She's her back. Do you think you could do four nights if you had to? Yeah. Be in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah for not sure. Even hesitation. No hesitation. No, 100% I could. Uh, anything else you want to talk about Bonnaroo or is that good? I think that's great. It's great. Up is world. Party, Party time. Party time. Excellent. Bonnaroo. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Get this guy a beer presented by our good friends at Labatt Blue. <laughs> Not um, that they need any more beer. Fuck, were they drinking a oh lot of stuff? Oh my God. Um, anyways, I want to give Ike a, a blue light for game five and Mark Stone for game five. And then I think we both can agree. Ike's and Wild Bill, their performance at the parade. I mean, that's how you have a time. I text Wild Ike's, congratulations, Bill. have a time. Yeah. And he's having a time. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It was unbelievable. The parade to the, I mean, the ceremony on stage from the fall on his ass yeah. to, to the microphone, you know, to the, I was pretty fucking good. <laughs> I mean, it's all time. All time. I, I love it. Do you think he looks at that like the next day when he sobers up and he's proud of it? Or is he, is he like, whoa, I was fucked up. Yeah. Well, I, don't I think he's he proud. I would be proud. Because it doesn't, doesn't matter how fucked up you get when you win. And we talked about this. Do you get on fucked up as you want i thought like of you with all the boys with the tarps off i'm like up dog would have been loving that he would have been right in I there mean, maybe. in vegas you got to take a tarp off yeah all the boys tarps off and they're all still pretty jacked they haven't been eating anything in fucking three months 
Eichel had the WWE belt on, no tarp on. Ike's had the nice comfy shorts. I thought Ike's had a good look with the bucket hat on. I thought Ike's had a good look going. Well, he threw his, I think he threw his tarp off his, his, uh, the parade cart right yeah. away. So right he, away. Just, he didn't even have a shirt for the rest of the day. That's one way to do it. Um, it, it was, it was great. I, I watched just highlights when I was on my way home, you know, feeling pretty good from Bonnaroo. And, uh, I think the Vegas Golden Knights did it right. Parade the strip looked, looked awesome. unbelievable. Yeah. I love how they did it at night, obviously, because it's so hot there and just the way the strip looks all I lit up. Um, I guess the first night they took it to that Omnia, like we said, and then Ike said, let's take it to this little Irish pub. They went to some little Irish pub after Omnia and stayed there until five. I love a good Irish pub. I don't know if that's where I would have taken her. Right. I mean, you said it last week. You ended up at the Rhino. There's a real good chance they would have been like, where'd that cup go? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the Brian took it. All right, go to the Rhino then. I don't know if I would have went to an Irish pub. That's all I'm saying. No disrespect. I'm Irish. I love an Irish pub. I just thought that was like, I think it was like, maybe they're like watering hole that they go to though. So maybe it's showing it to the, the boys that they know there. Yeah. Uh, and they knew they could be by themselves there probably. Uh, no, hundred percent. And then. That is their spot, and they're yeah. they're they're allowed to keep it there till whenever. You're not going to stay in these nightclubs, right? You're no, gonna stay in a nightclub. Till no, but you're going to stay at the Rhino, or just go get a big suite and have a <laughs> at the Rhino. Yeah. Oh no, you mean a big suite in the hotel? Yeah, yeah. You like know. the stripper pole suite at the Palms or something. Totally. Back in the, day. the basketball in that and the hoop and what the do you hoop, think has is. the nicest suites nowadays? Probably Aria or something. Or I mean, I'm sure they all have nice ones. Well, no, the MGM on the very basement has these like Mansions. ones that are ground level okay. with all private pools and everything. They're, they're pretty special. They're pretty badass. So that's where maybe you take it, you come underneath, you get your own underneath valet. And then it's, yeah. there's like a, just one hallway of these suites. It's fucking bad. They're badass. They're like two or three bedroom suites. Yeah. I guess it would be like you guys, if you were, in, I'm sure they did it in St. Louis. They probably took it to OB Clark's, right? Like that's probably why those boys that's took exactly it. exactly what yeah. they did. This, this is, is a watering spot. hole that these boys probably hit on their way home after games. Yeah. That's close. And they feel comfortable. There's no, you know. I think I got to realize too that you got to pace yourself a little bit, right? Like you, 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 you won the cup. You got like a couple of weeks coming up, right? The first night, maybe just take go go to the Irish pub and relax. I don't think I'd have a. There you would wouldn't no, be, be no that. cruise control on this thing. No, no, this car and no no cruise control. Overdrive, baby. Okay. <laughs> I just have to make sure I didn't miss the parade. Good luck. <laughs> I sleep it. Doc Good, Doc Goodwin style. I was so bright. You missed the fucking parade. Well, that was the pitcher's name for the Mets, right? Bing, do you remember Doc? Doc Goodwin. Doc Gooden. 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 Good. G O O T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He missed. He the, missed the, the yeah, New York Mets. Yeah. In all seriousness, this is not funny. He had a problem, but he <laughs> says he looks back like that was his biggest regret in life. Dwight like, Gooden. The, Dwight Gooden. Thank you. The boys were like, I don't. Even, there wasn't cell phones back then in the fucking eighties, but they were like calling his house looking for him, and he didn't make it. So, uh, but good on Vegas. The city, the fans, everything was unbelievable. The parade. Good on them. Uh, like I said, up dog, I am jealous of those guys. So get these guys a Labatt Blue. Um, next, we got Tea Times presented by our good friends at TaylorMade. Uh, thank you to TaylorMade. Yeah. Great playoff. Uh, Maxi, Binger, uh, Princey on social did a great job with the giveaways. Uh, we sent all our guests that came on from the National League, brand new Stealth 2 drivers. So to Casey and TaylorMade, it was a great partnership. Up dog, hopefully we can continue building this, but uh, gotta love TaylorMade. Do you think the boys are hitting their fucking driver as far as Rory was hitting it this weekend? No. I mean, wow. He fucking bombs Stealth it. too, baby. Bombs he away. Bombs. Um, bombs. Listen, obviously, you know, um, we got Maddie Kachuk coming up here in a little bit. And well, what a run. I mean, you know, I'm sure they're still stinging. Um, I loved watching them. I do believe they will be back. I can't yeah. imagine. I always said this to you on this podcast. I can't imagine losing the Stanley Cup final. Like, would you rather lose in the final or lose in the first round? It's tough because, like you said, what an experience these guys got. And when they do look back in a couple of years, they will appreciate it more. But the pain that they're all going through. Uh, listen, they got $10 million in cap space next year, which is a lot nowadays, up dog. Free agents are Stahl Brothers, Gudis, and the Lion King. And then the injuries. We touched on them a little bit on the recap. Obviously, Chucky broke him sternum. Ekblad was fucking banged up. Monty. Your boy Gudis and that Listerine had a broken leg. That's why he didn't play. <laughs> Put so, that in there. He had a broken leg. Jeez. And, I mean, I do think they'll be back, though. I guess that's my point. I think yeah. they're going to be like the Lightning they lost to the year they lost to the Blackhawks. This team, I think, will be back and Bill Zito will make the right moves, but I think it's a great learning experience for them. I mean, when you think of Verhege, Montour, Ekblad, Kachuk, 
Barkoff. Duclair. Did you say Duclair? I haven't yet, but those guys are there for a while. Cousins. They all chipped in. They all experienced this together. They all fought adversity all year. Um, that's just... You know, that's just fuel for these guys, right? And as disappointing and as heartbreaking as this is, and as how rough of a summer these guys are, you know, probably already having, whether it's getting over their injuries or getting over this heartbreak, this only builds character, builds strength. They brought hockey back to Florida. There's a buzz still in the city. These guys, I mean, and having Chucky on, you know, they're walking around town and, and kids and people are wearing their jerseys again. This is... They brought yeah. hockey back to South Florida. It's in an amazing way. What a, what a vibe. When we were there, I mean, there's, there's a buzz in the city. Um, it's a hot ticket again. You know, they're going to compete with Miami with the soccer team now that Messi's there. But yeah. this, is, this is good. This is good. And, and I'm pumped. I'm pumped to say I'm a, a Florida Panther alumni because, you know, witnessing them buzz through Boston, Toronto, Carolina. I mean, they had a hell of a year yeah. and they got to be proud of it. They got to go into this summer going, fuck, let's get healthy. Let's bring back these guys. And and you mentioned those. I think Gudis stepped up. He's going to get a paycheck. Yeah, I, I that's where I was going with this. Yeah. I, I think Eric Stahl 100% has to stay. I mean, him and Montour, I, I don't think, you know, Stahl's made a lot of money in his career. You know, can he go somewhere else to make a little bit more? Yeah, but no state tax, live in Florida, play with Montour. I think that's a no-brainer. And good is the same thing. I don't think he should go anywhere. No. I think he's a perfect 5-6 like for them. Tampa might try to get him again just because. Maybe. And then there's people asking, you know, Bobrovsky's making $10 million. What do you do with Bob? Listen, what he showed me in the playoffs, I'm keeping him at $10 million because he proved to me that he, when he turns it up a notch, he is an elite, elite goaltender. Yeah. And yeah, Vegas just proved that maybe you don't need a $10 million goalie. But they also had arguably the best defense in the fucking NHL. So yeah. I would just I would stay with Bob. I think the boys love him. Ten bananas is a lot, but what he showed me come playoff time, he's just an elite goaltender ups. Yeah. No, I agree. <clears throat> and you need it. You need goaltending. And if you don't have it from one guy, you need to get it from the next. And that's what you know. That's what Florida did, and that's what Vegas did ultimately too. Yeah. Right? They went through four goalies. So you do need a goalie. Um, I do think Mark Stahl is a guy you bring back. Eric Stahl character guy keep him there right like you're right you're right you got to keep these guys i think maybe this is my i think eric stall just it's time to maybe get a front office job or something he's gonna get some kind of gig right i don't know he was good but does he still want to keep mucking for 700 800 grand i mean i don't know it keeps well it's tough to make you can't make that money do anything else that's for on the road keeps you on the road (laughs) keeps you on the road gotta love the road and i will say this and this is kind of maybe i don't know weird to say or ironic with all the injuries that we just went through. I, I think this run will make them a better regular season team next year. They may get off to a little bit of a slow start with the Stanley Cup hangover, but I think they're going to realize that, hey, they're going to get that mojo back. I, I look for them to you know, be one of the better teams in the Atlantic next year. I don't yeah. think they're going to sneak in is what I'm saying. I yeah, think they're yeah. going to be a top three. You know, how, how no, are you? And, and the confidence will be from the coach down, right? Like midseason, coach probably is like, fuck my first year here is kind of a flop like you know do i have the guy's attention do i have the do they have my message are they playing hard for me now everyone proved they're on the same page there yeah everyone proved they believe in each other they went to war and back and they survived it it's only going to make them stronger so i expect uh i expect the florida panthers to continue to be a team that people are not going to want to play it's a great point by you like the mojo when they come to training camp next year compared to the year before, like when Maddie didn't know anyone and right. Like they, we just got traded and they lost their boy Hubie. It was probably like, they're going to come back into training camp next year. Guaranteed Paul Maurice is going to make it an easy training camp, right? Guys are going to be slowly coming back, but they're going to feel good. They're all going to have their nice houses there. They're all going to be settled in. Um, I, I hope they're back. I, I hope they're back. Yeah. I think they will be. So uh, once again, thank you, Taylor made unbelievable run with you guys in the playoffs. I'll tell you what, I'm hitting my seven nineties pretty good right now. My game, you know, yeah, I you shot are. 79 the other day. No way. What I win? 200. That's Joe not bad. Whalen, 200. Oh yeah, you did. What a my three wood. I'm hitting my three wood. Good. My stealth two is coming along for me, you know, keep it in play. I don't know. Taylor made my maybe. layup birdie on 18 or really fucked you guys up. Wow, I thought, you know, thought you're maturing. Yeah. You're maturing <laughs> yeah. right in front of my eyes. So, uh, Taylor May, thank you again. Casey, you the man. Appreciate it. Uh, cup odds are out already next year. The cup odds for next season presented by DraftKings promo code Curfew Kings. What do you like? I don't what do you like? Vegas, I want to say it, but fuck it. I said it. Um, Updog. 
I'm really intrigued to see what the Colorado Avalanche do. They're the betting favorites right now. Your Seattle Kraken, right? Cost me a lot of sizz each and really proved to me that the lack of depth they had up front. So until I see what the Avalanche do, they need some help up front, my man. You know, Ryan O'Reilly, you know, does Ryan O'Reilly want to go back there? You see Landis Cog? What's the first thing Landis doing, by the way? In the pool. I told you, get in the pool, bud. I know. Landy's in the pool. See what he's doing? He looks like fucking Aquaman in there. Yeah, you see he's what with he's doing? this guy, Bill Knowles. It's the same program I did when I fucked my knee up. It's yeah. the same program. You wow. got to get in the pool. Got to get in the pool. He'll be back stronger than ever, by the way. After I saw him on that program, I knew he's getting the right treatment. He's going to be back. All you guys out there with fucked up knee injuries, get in the pool. There's a program for it. Get in there. Got to get in there. Uh, the Bruins at plus 800. I, I think the bees are going to take a step back. We don't, know what, we don't know what's going on with Bergeron. I'm not touching the Leafs till. Uh, eh. ah. Oilers plus a thousand. I That's mean, not bad. Connor's got to win one eventually here. He, the last two years, he's lost to the the, the champs, the Avs and the Knights. So I if know. you're Connor McDavid and Drysaddle, you're thinking in your in your workout, driving in your whatever they're driving, the Lamborghini SUV or whatever. Fuck, we're right there. They're right there. By the, way, by the way, games five and six, the Oilers outshot the Vegas Golden Knights almost two to one in games five and six that they lost. So they were close. To, and Vegas had seven power plays in game five. The Oilers were not too far away from getting out of, you know, a series against the champs, much different than they were the year before when they got swept by Colorado. Big but, time. but they were that close. They go into playing Dallas in the conference final. Who knows what happens, right? They would have beat Dallas. They would have beat Dallas. And then arguably... You know, I don't know. We had Florida, to Florida was so banged up, yeah, right? So you never know. You never know if they could have kept up with the pace, but we'll yeah, never yeah. know. Vegas, but I, I, I we, we both said whoever so, won that Oilers Vegas series was going to win the cup. Yeah, we thought, yep. Um, I'm going to just say a couple value I, plus 2500. The LA Kings, we got a little rumor mill coming up. I think them at plus 2500 preseason, maybe tickle them. And then our boy John Cooper and the Lightning down there, at plus 1600, a full summer off. We'll see what, what they can do here, you know, July 1st. But they're going to have a little more hop in their step. Can they recite killer? I don't know. But at plus 1,600. And then the Panthers there, plus 1,600. No, cra- no cracking what, in there. What no about your devils? in the top 13. Your devils, plus 1,200. I don't mind that. You don't mind that, eh? I'm going to stay on the devils bandwagon. My boy Frosty. Well, you're all on it now. Our boy Travis Green. Greener. Greener. Hired. Assistant coach. That's a good gig for him. Oh, yeah. Lindy Ruff's not going to coach forever. Maybe they're grooming Greener. If, like they, if they if Travis Green becomes the head coach of the Juju Devils, I will change my tune on the Devils that day. I love them. Jack Hughes, by the way. I'm getting a bad rap here, by the way. I right. mean, these Devil fans are I all know, over me, but it's I've just, been pumping Jack Hughes' tires. Yeah, I don't love that I have to cheer for the Devils. I just like the way they play. You do, eh? I like it. You do, huh? Yeah. Did like you like it. how they played against Carolina? Because <laughs> that oh, was a fuck. bitch See, but you need to f- f- fix a little bit of the D. Get some big D. It shows that it works. Big Winning size. teams have big D, big strong D that can move, fucking hit, play hard, play physical. Sign Milan Lucic. Yeah. Can you sign Luch? Sign Ryan Reeves if you can't get Luch. Give me some fucking buddy up there that's got a little size. Get bigger. They got to get yeah. bigger. A guy like Eric Johnson, who's a free agent, could be a good right-handed pickup for the Devils, yeah. too. They, just size. Yep. Um, up dog, we don't need to pick right now. We, we, there's no hurry, but yeah, all the yeah. odds are out on DraftKings Sportsbook. Check them out. Um, I'm interested to see what the abs do, my man. I'm interested to see what the abs do. So, uh, Milk Card, presented by our good friends at Life Force, promo code curfew. Up dog, we went through the con Smythe voting, and I think the right guy got it, Marcia. So, I, th- I think they could have gave it to Ikes, too. But, um, but anyways, you know... Wayne Gretzky for TNT and Mark Messier for ESPN don't have votes. To me, those two guys that are working for networks, that are tracking the playoffs, that are watching every game, come on, man. Let's get these guys a vote. I'm yeah. putting the NHL on the milk curtain. Gretzky and Messier, they deserve a vote for the Consmite. Yeah, you can bump a couple media pigeons out of there. I agree. Right? Yeah. Milk curtain city. And uh, also the lady on stage that tried to take Wild Bill's microphone from him. <laughs> Let him go. You're on the milk cart. <laughs> hey, let the kid go. He's in a fucking, he's just feeling it is what you call that. He's let him a, go. He's having a time. People are loving it. It was great for TV. How many IVs do you think those nights are getting? I would just have the IV guy move into me for the Stanley Cup party. Move in, bud. Spare room's there. Just keep yeah, him just, humming. Just keep it in my arm. I'll just, <laughs> just walk around with the bag all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the milk card presented by Life Force. Uh, back up the Brinks truck up, dog. Uh, shout out to our good friends, Canada Dips, Lip Boomers again. They've been good to us since this. 
podcast has started. You're talking about your devils. Jasper Bratt. Yeah. Eight years. Ready for this one? 63, 63. bananas. 7.8 million. It's a pretty special deal. Now, to me. He's a good player. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm just and thinking, like, if you're Fitzgerald, and I think Fitzgerald's done a great job, and he's a good GM. But you just watch Vegas win the Stanley Cup with size and compete. And you're going to give this guy who's five feet fuck all, you're going to give him $63 million? I don't know. That's just my opinion. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to have guys that get you in the playoffs. No, and he's like, you, you know, he's the size of like a Marsha show. He's not, you know, he's not Riley Smith. He doesn't play as quite as hard as Marsha Shaw, though. Yeah, but he's young. He's going to get there. Yeah? Yeah, he's young. Well, how, I mean, how old is this kid? What is he, 23? Oh, let's look him up. I mean, guys, this is looking at this. Brad's got... probably 23, 24. I mean, what a deal to be that young. That that great. He's got good Swedish blonde hair. I know that. 24. 24 years old. See, so, I mean, I think he gets in there in battles. I know he's not that big. 5'10", but... buck 75. That's so me. So he's... That's Bing. I'm 5'9", 175. He might be a little more toned than Bing if I had to guess. He used to be a little. <laughs> used to be like, that's used to be like that. Yeah. If I had to he guess. He used to be a little chunky, though. He, he can squat 240, more than Binger. He could probably squat more than Binger, I would guess. Yeah. yeah. Binger, what's your max squat, bud? I haven't been to a gym since college, so I don't can't even give you an answer. <laughs> um, this kid, I mean, we but, questioned the Jack Hughes deal, right? When it happened. We were like, whoa, eight years, kid's coming off an injury. Has he proved himself yet? This kid is part of their core and OB. I just, you're going to surround him with big players. I love the fact you want to bring in Milan Lucic. I think that's a great pickup. These two kids, man, they're, they're two of the best in their age group. They have creativity. They have size. They just went through a great year together. They're only going to get better. I think it's proof that Tom Fitzgerald says, this is your guys' team, and we're going to surround you guys with, with character guys, but you two are carrying the torch here, so let's go. Listen, it's a great story. Six round pick, 162 overall. I respect that. He just got money. His grandkids, grandkids will be set up in life. 32 goals up, dog. 73 points. It's a good year. How many games? And he's, uh, he's 24 years old up. Yeah, how many so, games did he play? Like, he, he's not that young. He played all 82. Long, that's, that's, that's impressive. Hey, listen, I, I'm all for the kids getting paid. Yeah. I'm all for them. Look, good for him. I just that's think- That's a lot of money. You're right. You want me to put my- What's G Timo Meyer going to get from these guys? Well, I don't know. That's a great point by you. Who, pay, who, who should you pay more, him or Timo Meyer? I mean, I think if I was Tom Fitzgerald, I would go to Timo Meyer's agent and say, I'm giving you what Borhover I got. Eight years, eight and a half. Sign it right now. And I think that would be a fair deal for both sides, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. But- I don't know. I just think, and it's a copycat league. You know this. When you see a big team win it, I guess the, the, I guess it, it could evolve, right? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Game's getting faster, younger. No, more. we're going old school. We're going big. We're slowing it down. I, I, All right? I, we're yeah. not going faster and smaller. We're going the other way. Keep going, Vegas. <laughs> I'll make a comeback. So, no, up dog, you're right. I'm happy for the kid. 32 goals. That's a lot of sizz each. So, uh, the rumor will... Going to give some love to Sauce Hockey here, even though they didn't pay for this. We're still going to give them some love. Um, they helped us. It was a good little playoff run with Sauce Hockey. So yeah. thanks to Smitty and the boys there at Sauce. Uh, we pumped out some good playoff tees. Uh, you know, yeah, you do. still get your Vegas Golden Knight ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think our worst call was the other ones we made. They were sick looking too. But I know. My, all my buddies back home love them. No, they they're great, but they, they, they We lost. just missed the boat. Yeah, because yeah, we were expecting them to kind of at least go to seven. We would have said it said Oilers and six, right? <laughs> uh, rumor mill. This one comes from Steve Cooley, my man Cools. Connor Hellebach. Hellebach? Is that what he said? Hellebeck? Hellebach. To the LA Kings. Um, I think this is a great fit. I think even bring him in on a one year deal. Don't have to resign him just yet. Bring him in. Um, I think it'd be great. I think Toronto Maple Leafs. I think if you're Brad Tree Living, yeah. you're calling about Connor Hellebach. Um, but Cooley came up with that last week and I thought, Hey, it's a good little rumor mill. So I mean, guys heads been up for LA if they do get him. guys been in Winnipeg forever. He deserves some fucking sun. Yeah. Let's get him in the vitamin D out here. All right. I Are think they're going to lose the goalie. They got from Columbus, LA. Yeah. He's UFA. So the odds are they don't sign him and they look to a bigger guy. Yeah. I think it's a good little one year. Just bring yeah. him in. You know, don't give up too much for him because you don't know if you can resign him. But LA has lots of prospects. Yep. They have a good prospect pool. I think it would be a good fit. Um, Eric Carlson reported by our boy, Dave Pinota will be moved. Any teams? 
Anywhere? I mean, that's no shocker, but look for, yeah, look for the big players to get involved there. Look for Oilers. Look for Toronto. Look for <sighs> someone, right? I, I, uh, what I do just, you think? I don't know. I'm trying to think of a team that jumps Chicago. out. Chicago? Chicago's got lots of cap room. Chicago would be a great bring him in to play with Bedard. Right? That'd be great. Put him on the same line. Play him at well, He plays forward, basically. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, totally. But Carlson probably wants another chance to win, right? Wouldn't you think? Or? Um, yeah, but I think... I think Chicago, with the right strategy, can get a team in the playoffs in the next two years. Like I, I think they can. You when, got the you, Madhouse brocking already, huh? Well, no, I just this guy think, hasn't played a shift yet. Yeah, but fuck, when you got the tools and the money and the young and star the cap space. and the cap space and the fan base, Eric Carlson's got four more years. You ready for this? At eleven and a hook. Yeah. So how are you? So San Jose should eat three of that. Yeah. That brings it down to eight and a hook, and that's an average D man now in the NHL. It's l- lower than Nurse. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just I found this interesting because he said he's going to be moved. Like he made it sound like a hundred percent. I still yeah, think that I, contract's going to be a problem. No, not after a Norris Trophy year. You, you're going to give the guy some credit. Like he he has showed he has the fire to be a top D in the league. He's not hurt. He's healthy. I mean, he's still valuable. So I, I think the trade or a move for him would be. A uh, legitimate one, and one that a team's like, listen, we're in win now. Eric Carlson can help us win now. There's no doubt about that. What about his old team in Ottawa? There, fuck Ottawa. They got 17 million in cap space. Yeah, but I think he wants to go back what to about, Ottawa. What about him and Jacob Chickren as a top pair? Chickren and Carlson. Thomas Shabbat, maybe you ship him off back to San Jose for eight bananas a year. I don't know. Yeah. That's just a good. thought. Just yeah. a thought. So I like the that. rumor mill, baby. Thanks again to the boys at Sauce Hockey for hooking us up. Around the National League, we're going to get some love to G4 again, Updog. Uh, they hooked us up with some gear for the playoffs. So G4, check it out. Looking sharp. Sick stuff uh, for your big boys at Double XL Fits. Uh, a lot of good players get bought out. Put Oliver Ekman Larson on the list. He is bought out. I thought that was... Yeah, gonna happen, eh? You did, yeah. Yeah, it's you know, four years and twenty nine million remaining on an eight year sixty six. So he gets that four years over eight years. He's laughing. Yeah, eight laughing. years he gets that, and he gets two thirds of that twenty three bananas. So now here, here's a guy that you know, some team is gonna get a pretty half decent player at cheap. This is a gonna, guy that you're calling his agent already. Yeah. I don't know the rules, but fuck him, call him Edmonton. You get him on a nice little buyout discount. Yeah. He'll, right. He's going to get a nice move hit. nurse and bring him in. Kind of like Ryan Suter. Remember he got bought out by Minnie and signed in Dallas. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. I think, I think ecky has got a lot of game left in him too. I, I haven't quite like ISO cammed him, but I played with him as a young guy. He, he's a good player. Yeah. He just needs a little, like, you know, a little love for the game. Maybe a little bit. Don't we all eight years. <laughs> he's going to get 19.33 million over eight years. That's a nice little retirement package when how, he decides to shut down. How are you? Updog, I wanted to talk to you about Brad Tree Living. He flew to Arizona to meet with Matthews. Yep. He's bringing Keith back. Yep. That's the play, right? You got to fly out there and fuck, I said I'd move in with him until he signed Why the not? deal. First yeah. class, just jump Get out, out there, in the talk to him. Nice room at the W. I mean, time's a ticking here. It's June 20th. His no move clause kicks in in 10 days. 10 fucking days. So I thought that was a good play by Brad. Got to go out there. Got to get to know him. We'll see what happens. And then a shout out to our boy Loops, the new head coach of the Ducks out here in Orange County, Greg Cronin. Loops says he's a great guy. Great guy. Southie Boston guy. Beauty. Jacked up. Loves to chat with the boys. Loves the boys. So that was good news. Yeah, probably a good guy that's going to, you know, put his put his fucking face in the in the fight for these kids, right? They, it's going to be a young team no matter what. Yeah. Right? It's a young squad. Got to have them, you know, the right message from the coach. You got to have a coach you want to play for. Fires you up. Dallas Eakins had his had his moment here. Um, he's moved on. Time for a new voice. What better guy than a, than a good Boston guy? Yeah, Loops says he loved Loops loves him. So that's good by me. That checks my box. So yeah. uh, cheering for this guy now. Didn't really know much about him before we, you know, we're talking to Loops the last couple of weeks. So good luck, Greg. Go get him in uh, Orange County. And then last but not least, Jerome McGinley back in the game. Craig Conroy, you bumped into Iggy at the Memorial Cup. Yeah, I had a feeling he was yeah, going there. This is a great call. Great yeah. call by Connie. Good on Iggy. Got to get him back involved in the game. Absolutely. Got to get these guys like Getzlavs and Aginlas back with the organizations, around the boys, in the room. That's what it's all about. Yeah, to me. they're so. legends of their organizations. Yes, they're the face of their franchises for 10, 15 years. 
They need to be around the, the squad, the, the, uh, the family, the friends, everyone involved within the organizations. Those are the players that fucking gave their blood and sweat yeah. and tears to these, to these teams. Got to have Iggy around the saddle dome. Yeah, the I old agree. shitty saddle dome. You got to have him around. And last but not least, the updog called it. Jason Spezza. <laughs> these two fucking guys love each other. They hey, do. Dude, yeah, yeah, they do. Like, I, what mean, do they do? I don't know. What do they do on the road, I wonder? Assistant general manager. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing on the road? Who knows? Who the fuck knows? But uh, you called it up. So I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know Spez really. I mean, Big Earn always said he was a good guy. So I love Big Earn. Yeah, he's been a, he's a hell of a player. Been wow. around the game a long, long time. Good toe drag. He had yeah, that toe drag. Toe drag and a nice snapper. He had that snapper and that toe drag since he's about 14. You should have seen him, what he did in the OHL, actually. The goals that he scored in the OHL. It was insane. Yeah, I know. It I was played, really insane. Yeah, he was. I mean, I played against him when we were that young and played with each other. And yeah. it was always like, wow. He had the longest stick and the little toe curve. Yeah, and he just and bring he it just, from here. Yeah, wild. All the way here. Yeah. I mean, listen, as much as I trip Dubas and whatever, I mean, I would bring my buddy with me, too. If I got a GM, I'd hire you. I'd bring Loops in. 100%. Who would, I don't know who'd watch the hockey games. But <laughs> <laughs> I'd bring you in. So uh, we'll see how it turns out. Pittsburgh. And last but not least, this episode, a special interview from one of our cherished, most uh, honored fucking guests of the year. What a hell of a playoffs he had. Matty Kachuk, Chucky. Um, thanks for him taking his time. And we're going to just dive right into this because it's a great interview. And uh, here's Matty Kachuk. Fella. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up dog, this fella needs no introduction. Uh, Matty Kachuk, Chucky, uh, thank you so much for taking some time to join us, fella. First of all, how you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, it's always uh, it's always fun talking to you guys after each season. Um, yeah, uh, you know, feeling uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's, you just got a lot of heal. You know, it's it's uh, nothing really uh, in my control right now. You can let it frustrate you as much as you want. And, uh, at the end of the day, it's got to take a f- multiple weeks and see how I am I'm a month, month and a half. So just take time, enjoy, uh, just kind of relax right now. Like I'm just trying to, I mean, I was really, really, really busy for 11 months yeah. like since the trade, you know, coming down there, trying to get a house, training camp was coming. Like it's just been, you know, full on throttle on for 11 months. So. Uh, if they're telling me to t- only take two weeks off, I'm taking four. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I need a little bit of rest and recovery and come back stronger next year. I was going to tell you to take six weeks yeah, off. Yeah, no take, take six yeah. weeks. Well, uh, you look fresh anyway. We like the cut. The beard's gone. So you're, you're looking fresh, fella. Yeah. I, I tell you what, though. I loved having that beard as long as it did. Um, that was the uh, longest I ever had a beard. Motivation to try to beat it next year. Yeah, I don't know about you, Obi, but I could never grow the beard. Mine was greasy. Yeah, Mine was greasy. just a straight neck beard. Like conference finals one time, it started to get just greasy. And I'm like, yeah. I just got to own this. There's yeah. no touching this up now. So I know the feeling, Chucky. Yeah, well, Chucky, <laughs> we appreciate you taking the time, buddy. I, I know it's it's tough for you with everything, but, but man, looking back, what a run it was. I kind of want to go back to like where it all came together for you boys. I was a big believer in you all year. You know, obviously Barky was banged up throughout the year. He got healthy. You started to find your game big time in the second half. Like we love when Paul went up and down you boys in Toronto and you guys came back and won an OT. Is that when it clicked Chuck here? When did it start clicking? You're like, here we go, boys. We can, we can get on a run and get in the playoffs. Yeah. We never went on a run the whole year. Like, I don't think we won three games until six games left in the season or four games left in the season. So um, I'd say we were really consistent with being inconsistent, I guess, if that's the best way to put it. Like we would win one, lose one, win one, lose one. I think we all knew deep down that that was kind of the game where we just lost four in a row. And that was like the game where if we don't do something right now, like it's, it's over. Like it it is a very likely chance for it to be over. And um, we got, well, played the whole game. Um, we had the Lion King in that for his first game. And, uh, <laughs> and and there wasn't, there was actually, there was zero give up in our game, but it almost looked like it. Like we were just, we were slow, tired, not hitting. We were playing like just really soft and just, I don't know. I just think that it all came together last minute there. And we had a big goal from Rhino and then, you know, we won an o- overtime. And then, like, starting from then, we just started to play this hockey that, you know, not only Paul, but we all wanted to play all year long. And um, I think it really showed once we got into playoffs. And 
like we were a team that really didn't play that physical or really like that style all year. When we got to playoffs, it was, it just clicked for us. So um, definitely from that game, we had a, a fairly easy schedule to end the year after that game for the next few games. So we kind of just like got some wins under us, started feeling good and then needed to win, you know, I think it was three out of the last four to get in. And, um, you know, we did it and beat, you know, Buffalo that was right behind us, Ottawa was right behind us and um, Washington. That was, it was just, it was a crazy ending. So, um, but that game definitely started. And I think seeing the emotion from Paul really, really fired us up because we know how invested he was and you know everybody else was. And I think we just need, maybe needed that just to realize like, all right, we don't get it going now. Like it's over. <laughs> Chucky, would you say it's, it's fair to say like, you know, come all-star game, you guys were kind of in the hunt, but you were still underdogged. Uh, you know, us here at Missing Curfew, Obi was on NHL Network with Jackie betting that you guys were getting in the playoffs. Yeah, he still owes me a bottle. He's throwing in Camus bottles of wine with her like, hey, the Panthers are getting in, right? But you guys kind of own that underdog kind of mentality the whole year. Was it, was it something that kind of gave you that extra hump once playoffs started where you were like, guys, we're you know, fuck, we, we've always believed it, but everyone here has been doubting us. Now it's just like, now it's our time on a, on a stage to actually, you know, do what we know we can do. I remember being in a must win in Detroit. I think it was like January 8th. <laughs> like, as so, so we were like, we were just in those, like we were in the, I, I remember being so depleted after we played in Vegas um, like January 20th, because we just felt we had to win that game. And we were up like two, one or two, nothing and lost it in regulation. So like, it was just like stuff like that going the whole way that I really think just like once we got into playoffs and we all realized it was zeros across the board, it didn't matter who we were playing. Like, can you believe we're in this position? Like yeah. we got to take advantage of this somehow. Like, I don't know how we are, but we got to take advantage of it. It's, it's a new year. So I really enjoyed that part of it. Like I really enjoyed the fight till the end. I've never been in that position before. I've always either been, you know, you're most likely not going to, I've had, you know, one or two years where you're most uh, not likely going to make it. And then, you know, the four or five years that was pretty smooth sail until playoffs. And, and obviously the most success I've had personally and my team's had has been this year. And I think that fight to the end is what made it. So that's one thing that I'm going to take with me going forward in all these seasons is, it doesn't matter if you're at Boston Bruins and you're going to lock up the president's trophy with 10 left, or if you're, you know, fighting for home ice, but you, you know, you're just happy that, you know, you don't have to play the must wins down there. Like you got to have that, that mindset where you have to do, you have to play so desperate down the stretch because turning that switch on is, it's pretty tough. Like it, it is pretty tough. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just felt like for us, like that, that's something that the guys are really going to take from this year. And that, that's only going to help us. Like we learned so many lessons this year. Like even, even something sim simple as we we're up three, nothing against Toronto. And, you know, we, we played a, a pretty poor game in game four. And then now all of a sudden we're, you know, tied late in game five and, you know, we won it, but, you know, just because you had one poor performance, like, you're playing for another four days against these guys. Like that's where you got to put the nail in the coffin. We did against Carolina the next series. So there are so many like little lessons that I'm so happy that I learned and, and our team learned. And we were all on the same age and it's just going to make us more successful down the road. For sure. And Chuck, you maybe answered this question for me, but I would always talk to talk about you guys, all the energy you used to get in. And like, I remember one year we, St. Louis went on this magnificent run to get in and we had them in the first round of Vancouver. And we just, we swept them because you could see their energy was it used so much energy for them to get in that they were almost spent when they got there. And maybe one of the most impressive things with you guys is you used all that energy. And then when you got in, you had all this, like, so you guys just thought, fuck it. We're in boys. Here we go. Zeros across the board. Like, I guess like you kind of said before. Yeah, exactly. But I will say there were times, you know, going into it where I know I, whether I was talking with Barky or, you know, with Rhino, we were like, fuck like <laughs> a lot of minutes there. Like, <laughs> how do we get up for another <laughs> one yeah yeah no but but like it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't that like we knew once we would get in like we were gonna be turn on that you know keep that switch going and we would be so fired up to get in but we were like trust me that that did go through my head but i, I think we all worked so hard in the summer and like like during the season with all the you know training and stuff. like we we were prepared for it so um that's one thing that uh 
I definitely thought about going into it. I was like, I mean, Paul's, Paul's riding the horses here to get in. Like, how are we going to be? But we, we felt good getting in and um, we felt even better in playoffs, which is a testament to all of us, I think. Yeah, Chucky, obviously going back to the Boston series, you know, on game five, your, your thing on social was like, we'll be back here for game seven and you fucking guys did it. And me and Updog watching game seven as ex-players, we couldn't believe how nervous Boston seemed. Like, talk me through that start of that game seven. Like, could you guys sense that, hey, boys, these fucking guys are squeezing the stick. Let's get a couple here. Or just what was the feel on the bench early in that game? I was just curious as an ex-player, like, really, like, boys, we got these guys or it's up for grabs or... Well, it's kind of like what I was talking about with that Toronto series. Like they did have chances to, to put us away. I mean, they were, you know, had a breakaway at the end of game five. I mean, had, had you know, a look or two in overtime. Um, they had a power play at the end of game five before the breakaway with like a few minutes left. I was the guy who did too many men just, just want to get out there. Hey, Paul. And, uh, and then game six, they're up like a few times. Like, so like, I don't care who you are. Like that goes to your head at the start of a game seven. It's like, what, what are we doing here? Like we should <laughs> yeah. not be here right now. And, and we sense that we sense it more from their fans though. Like I haven't heard that building that quiet in a regular season game. Just, I, and that's, I think it's just natural for them to feel like that. So um, our mindset that game seven was get that first goal. If we don't, we're still in a good spot. The longer this year, we were saying this at, at the beginning of that series. And we said it each and every series, if, the longer this series goes, the better it is for us. If it's in game seven overtime, put us there right now. So for us to be in that position and claw back and claw back, even though we, we were up to nothing in game seven and they tie it up to two, they were up three, two. And we we're like, you kidding me? Like, oh, that's right. We're, yeah. we, we were, we were down and out in January 9th before we played <laughs> Detroit. Like this is, this is unbelievable. And, and then Monty scored a huge goal and that the built once Monty scored, we didn't hear much from that building for the next 30 minutes until we, when we scored. So that was, that was just a super cool, like moment of the season. Like when, right from when Monty scored to when, when, when Swaggy scored overtime, that was just the tension. Like it, yeah. it was awesome. It, as a road player, it was unreal. Yeah, I was, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, to you guys, the difference of your team playing at home, which we got to see you guys, you know, in the finals, to going on the road as like that team that like the Toronto Maple Leafs, for example, we want Florida. Like the, the feeling of going into Toronto after what, one day off from the Boston series and going in like that crowd just being like, oh, this is great. We got the Panthers coming in. And then like just that feeling of being on the road, knowing how hard road games are, but like shutting up the crowds. Like, was there any moments you take away from being in those buildings in these in these big games being like, we just, you know, we own these guys. And this this feeling will last to these fans forever. Like the Toronto Maple Leafs will be haunted by us every time we come into that building. Did you get that feeling throughout like those road games down the stretch? 100%, 100%. And I know we, we everybody talks about it. Like, I mean, it is, so, there is something about starting on the road in playoffs. It's not, you'd rather have home ice and have that game seven at home, but like for us just to roll in from huge road game in Boston into like Toronto, like just weren't, we weren't even thinking about Toronto. Like we, we were just thinking about just going out there and playing the game. Like, I think that's what made it so successful is like, we really didn't have like, that's what it was about each and every game for us. So I think that helped so much. We won game one. And I, and I think we just brought in game seven into that game one, but the toughest game of that series was game two for us. Like that's when you're like, all right, boys. Like we've been on the road a little bit. Um, <laughs> I got no more underwear. Hard ones. <laughs> yeah. Like let's. Uh, how are we? How are we going to get this one? That was like kind of like the start of Bob. Yeah. Like stealing. Yeah. You know, he he stole that one for us, and I think I mean ever since he came in, he was unreal. But especially since that game, like he made some insane saves and just and he he was the reason why we won that game. But that's what you need in playoffs. Like we knew we were not going to have probably our absolute a game best game there but we just grinded it out and got that got up to two nothing coming home and that that's a tough hill for them so um yeah there's so many great memories and like little lessons i'll take like just throughout each series so um whether the ending you know obviously the ending is not what anybody of us wanted and what we didn't expect but even that series we wanted a ton 
Yeah, I was just going to ask you about the Leafs series, and you mentioned the Game 2, and for me, that series in Game 3, the way you guys came out in Game 3 or the way they didn't come out in Game 3, was was that a little shocking to you, or did you guys just realize oh. that, hey, Bob just stole one in Game 2, basically, we come out here in Game 3 and play Cats hockey, this base, this one's basically over, because in Game 3, I thought you guys really dominated them, and I was kind of disappointed with the pushback from the Leafs in that game, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you're right, like, we, that was our mindset, was to come in and and... 3-0, like, even though it was tough, you know, losing that game four and having to go back and having a real tight one, and then you never know if you're coming back or not, but just the way we played in that game three, and you can, you can see we were wearing them down. Yeah. And that was, whether you win the game or not, like, you know the season, keep, or the series keeps going, 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 like, the advantage keeps going in your favor, because it's going to be tough for them to recover from that one, but um you know, we won in overtime. Their goalie got hurt. Um, Wool came in and played really well when he was in. But just the way we were, we were coming at them in waves. And it was, it, that was probably one of our best performances of the playoffs was that game. And um, One thing that made us, our team, really successful in playoffs too is as the games kept going along, like, we got better. Like, in overtime, we didn't lose a game, but, like, we didn't give up many chances in overtime. Like, we we played as good as you can in that, in that extra frame or the multiple extra frame. So um, that game was huge for us, but I give the Leafs a lot of credit. Like they came out in that game four and they played really well. So, um, you know, I think they have, they have, I think they have that in them, but I think it was almost when you're down three, nothing, it's tough. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's tough. But <laughs> Uh, Chucky, I want to ask you about a kid who had a great series against the Leafs, a good Belleville, Ontario boy, Nick Cousins, uh, friends with Richardson. He played great in that series and to me, kind of put his, his name on the map, so to speak, or whatever you want to call it. But how good was he in that series and moving into the Carolina series for just just a playoff guy, huh? Yeah, he was awesome. And he, he got put with Benny and I in game five against Boston. Like that was when... I, to be honest, we threw the bingo balls out a little bit and <laughs> like, we, like I didn't play with Cuzzy all year. Yeah. Um, but before game five, we had a two, two couple tough ones at home against Boston. They really did dominate us in those games three and four. So for game five, we just tried to change something up and that's how like the lines were throughout the rest of the playoffs. So I think that getting Cuzzy on our line, it, it kind of created a little bit of a different look for us than playing with we Ryan and are playing with um, Verhege. Um, and we almost treated it as like the identity line for our team. So once he came on, I mean, I was probably a little more physical than I've, I've ever been. And like, I was probably harder on, like, I don't know. I just changed it up a little bit and it seemed to work for us. So, um, but having him on the line, he plays similar to Benny and I, um, which makes it super easy. And, just like it was more of like a uh, momentum thing for us, like getting him and like starting to do well and play. Like it, it, it was really cool. Like he, he didn't play. I don't know if he played in the top six much in the season, but he's a guy who can play in the top six. So um, I think it was great for him to show that he scored some big goals in the Toronto series and, and um, kind of continued his play, whether he was scoring or not, like just how hard he was and definitely made Benny and I, better throughout the year, throughout the playoffs in the sense where it was it was not as fun to play against us so we give him a lot of credit yeah but let's stay with sam bennett there too because yeah. we had jovo on when you guys after you guys won the easter conference and he's like bennett's the type of guy that you don't know what the fuck he's gonna do out there right yeah. like he could run you over or cross check you in the teeth i'm like yeah that's why i love this guy what's he like off the ice because on the ice he's got the big beard and you can't really see it like he looks like a killer but is he what's his demeanor off the ice chucky i'm just curious I've known him forever. He's one of my best friends. And I'd like to say he's pretty similar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't think he's as, I wouldn't say he's as loud as his play is like an hour, like in your face. And like, he, he's more of a quiet guy. And, um, but I don't know, like you gotta be careful with him. Sometimes you don't want to get on his bad side of it. He'll give you like that look even off the ice, but um, we've had so many great memories. Like I said, he's one of my best friends. And, um, I would argue the way he plays for us, like him and Barky, like they've, they've made our team what it is. And like when one of them's out, it's a big hole. And I think that's why throughout the season, it was really, I'd say it was challenging was because, you know, either one of them was in or, you know, the other one was out or whatever, but 
he's been probably when he came in a playoffs, he's, he's what made our team tick. And I think that speaks a lot for somebody who probably doesn't get recognized as much for that. But like without, obviously everybody knows what Bark is. He's the leader of our team, the captain, like top player in the league, everything. We all know that, but Benny's right up there too. Like he still, to me, does not yet. I hope this playoffs changed it for him a little bit, but without him, our team is nowhere close to what we were able to do. So I give him a ton of, ton of credit. I know when he came back and just playing with him, he changed my game completely. So um, he, he's, he's that guy on our team that makes it tick. And I give him a lot of credit for that. He seems like a guy that would put like flex all in his cup or something just yeah. to get all fired yeah, up like, before the game. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Like, Oh, he's going boys. Yeah. He's got that chin strap done up and the visor <laughs> down. And he's just looking to fucking, I mean, just talk I, about, I've, I've played with him though forever. And, and yeah. like, if you'd ask guys like, like stage, for example, like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, He's like, he's like Bennett, Benny, you're 20 years old. Like you're playing in the NHL. Like fucking smile. Kid. Like yeah. it's, it's a good day. It's a yeah. good day. So he, he just looks like that, but I don't know. He's, he is so fun. Every day was a good day for stage. He was making four bananas as a fourth flyer. That's why stage is out of here. <laughs> Talk about just that, just that hit in the Carolina series, Chucky, you know, behind the net. I mean, as clean as can be, but just, so like so fierceful and in the playoffs i mean those can change like momentums right like but when sam bennett just absolutely runs through the wall and you have you know you have wayne gretzky on the panel saying that's as clean as a hit in the playoffs and as hard as a hit as i've ever seen like what does that do to your team you, you it's just like when you have those guys that play through you know other players and just sacrifice their body day in day out in the playoffs it's it just it's such an uplifting thing. And it's a big reason why your team like continually got better and better. For sure. And at the end of the day in playoffs, you need to be big. Well, I wouldn't say you need to be big, but you need to be physical, need to be hard to play against. And I mean, if you're, you're big and and skate like Benny, like that just, that just helps. But I mean, it was all playoffs with him. Like the reason why we won against Boston was was mainly because of Benny and the pressure he was putting on their D and like them coughing it up. And I mean, yeah, maybe it took till game seven for them to, to really show one, but like that's guys like him is what wear down the other team's D and that's what won us that series. And then you go into the Toronto series and poor, poor Johnny Tavares and some of those guys were just getting lit up by Benny. <laughs> like he could every shift, like he was crushing guys. And then in Carolina, like, it's not like he, Benny's the last type of guy that's going to go after a guy or target a guy. But if you have the puck, like, I mean, he's going to yeah. hit you. Yeah. And he took, I mean, you never want to see somebody get hurt like that. But like, when Slavin goes out and now they're playing 4D for the rest of the game, and we just went into five overtimes or four overtimes like the day before, like that, that's the type of stuff that just, that, like, that's going to make the difference in yeah. the end. So yeah. um, we're super lucky to have him and, and, I mean, like I said, he just, he makes a tick for us. Chuck, you mentioned Barky and I don't know if it was after you guys beat Toronto or when you won the Eastern conference, but he said, and this is what I always say when people ask me about you, uh, how much you've impressed me of the way you are off the ice. And when you had me over at the all-star game, the way you treat your teammates and this and that, and what Barky said that what you have brought off the ice is almost more important than what you brought on the ice. And we know Barky, he, he's a man of few words. Like when he said that to me, I was like, and you could tell it was it was a good compliment for you, but that's that's got to be a good feeling when the captain says this. What this guy's brought off the ice is just as important as what he's doing on the ice. I mean, yeah, for sure. And and you know, I consider him one of my favorite teammates I've ever played with. And and we actually had like a few really good talks after the Vegas series, and um, you know whether it was at like the end of the year stuff or right after, and and we were kind of looking at each other as like we're going to be closest buddies and closest teammates. Like when this is all said and done, and I, I've really enjoyed my time with Barky. Like it's, it's been unreal. And um, what he can do on the ice is I've never seen it. Um, but just hanging out with him and like hearing how he thinks about uh, whether it's hockey or life or whatever, like it's very interesting and intriguing. So uh, we had you know a few talks after the series and um, definitely you know, I'm sad and upset with how it went, but like so excited with, I mean, we have pretty much matching, matching deals and years for the next, um, for the next seven, he makes a little more, which he should make way more. <laughs> but, um, so we were just kind of looking at like, we're going to get back 
you know, back in the playoffs and we know what it takes now. And like, it was super exciting for us. Like, I don't know. It was just a cool talk. It was cool. Like basically us complimenting each other and like what we did to get here and, and what we're going to do going further next year. And I don't know he's somebody who it's great having somebody who is similar in, in like their mindset of what they want, even though like we don't play the exact same or like maybe even lead the exact same. Like I would say he's more quiet and I'm more vocal is the easiest way to put it. But we both think the exact same when it comes to what the result needs to be and how we're going to get there. So it's great having somebody who's like a similar, you know, type of player and, and type of type of mindset to have. So it's good to bounce that off them. And, and it was just a really cool talk at the end of the year. And, and uh, you know, it was, it was a highlight to me it was what we, what we went through and being able to share it with him and knowing that we're going to be able to do it for hopefully the rest of our careers. Chucky, so many moments uh, I look back on your playoff run and I think about, especially with you personally, uh, all the goals and highlight goals. But can you bring our listeners into that four overtime game just for a minute? And 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 just like, you know, after the first one and how are the legs feel? And fuck? then the second one. And then it's like, holy fuck, should should one of us just hang down by the blue line, maybe, and just try to get a breakaway or I'd like bring us into that feeling of like, guys, let's just gut this out because it's the first game of this series. It could be a huge momentum swing. And then you know, maybe what it was like when you just exited the building and said, let's fucking go for game two here now. Yeah. Well, I was awful in the first like regulation. <laughs> I, was, I was drunk. And then it just seemed like as like the second game, as overtime got going, I just got a lot personally, got a lot better and our line got a lot better. But first overtime was tough. There was not much out there. Just like the first three, second overtime, there were maybe a couple more looks third overtime there were definitely more looks but nothing was going in yeah, and it was good. one of those where that i would not have been surprised if we were playing like 10 overtime that night like it was just one of those like yeah. goalies just said everybody was gassed um but yeah like you said whoever got that and got that win like that's a huge momentum for the next one because you know you, you don't want to be chasing the series after feeling like that but I don't know. It was just super cool to get that one. I went out with the last last shift in the fourth OT. Really just thinking, like, if I get a chance, like, just try to put this thing in. Like, I don't want to take <laughs> off the skates again. I don't even think I could take off my skates. Like, they were hurting so much. Like, seriously, like, I had the, uh, I forget what the, uh, like, the the buzzer thing is that you like, like the massage thing. Like, oh, yeah, the Theragun. The the this yeah, is a little ad for Theragun. Yeah. There again, like I'm putting <laughs> that on my feet and like, it was awful, like awful feeling. But, um, yeah, when I got that goal, I, I was just thinking, I have no idea what time it is, but let's just get out of here. And it was so funny. Like after games when you win, like you're listening to music on the, on the bus or like, you're having a good time. Like, we got on the bus. I, I wouldn't be surprised in that 10 minute drive. There were like 15 guys that were sleeping. Like it was, <laughs> it was a grind. Like guys, some guys, I don't even know if they ate that night. Like, what are you going to have a salad at two 30? Like stop yeah. it. Like it was, Oh, you got some ice cream crazy. maybe. Eh? I, don't know, so I would order some ice cream in the room probably. Oh, oh, I, I don't even, as much as you would say you would want that. Like there was no appetite. You couldn't even have a water. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I wonder why. I just was wondering, like, throughout this run, I don't know how much you guys practice or not, but when Bob was in net in practice, were you like, boys, keep the fucking thing down, or were you just hitting him in the pillows? Or what was the mentality to Bob in practice? I was always curious about that because as an old plug demon, I would have just been laying him in on Bob and hoping not to like hit him in the shoulder or something. He doesn't want that. He doesn't. He, eh? he yeah. almost wants to get like I don't know. He's getting scored on, and I'm chirping him. Guys are chirping. Like that's <laughs> it. Kind of how it was trending. Like we were definitely not a team that were like superstitious about like anything routine or whatever. Like I've been on teams before where if you're going on like a, a good run, like you do the same thing in practice, you do the same drills, you do the same morning skate, like, you know, same guys skate, same guys don't, but guys are changing it up after, you know, being up three zero to Carolina. Like it was just super fun there. So we never worried once about taking it easy on Bob. I would say like he's <laughs> up on the back door tappings and maybe just like if you <laughs> we, we saved the groin, but other than that, we are fine. Chucky, man, um, I, I know it stings now, but you will be bite back, like you said. Listen, you're up for the Hart Trophy, by the way. Congratulations. You made me some money on that. I bet a few people that you would be a nominee. But back-to-back 100-point years, buddy. I, I know right now it hurts, and I appreciate you taking the time and coming on here. You've been so good to us. But just think back. Back-to-back 100-point years. You're up for the Hart. You went to the Stanley Cup final. MVP I'm, of the All-Star game. Yeah, you game. will be back. MVP of the All-Star game. Like, I know it stings, buddy, but you've done so many good things for the game. And uh, 
You should be proud of yourself, I guess is what I'm saying, buddy. And better days ahead and you will be back. I truly believe that. Yeah, thanks, boys. I mean, that is as great as that all is getting a taste of what my dream is since I've been five years old and not coming up with it. That's that stings, but and it's it's been pretty recent that that series was. It's only been a week removed. So um I'm sure in a month like the other stuff I'll maybe be more proud of and can look back. But even looking back now, like these are memories this last year and I, I know one day I'm gonna do everything I can to win it and hopefully that can come true. But even looking looking back on what just happened and how Florida hockey is how hockey's changed in Florida and I mean like I'll be like we're going to we're going to Amso and people are asking for pictures now. Like yeah, it's just yeah. pretty cool. So <laughs> yeah. uh they uh it, it had a little Calgary feel to it where you're going around the town and everybody knew who you were. So that was probably what I'm most proud of and kind of trying to change the way hockey is down there and and that happening this year. So that was really cool. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. You should be proud. That was a that was a hell of a run. Yeah, you is, guys will be back. Is Big Walt still down in Florida? Did he need to lock yeah, the place up for you? Did, did he get back to Lou? Or how's Big Walt doing? We saw him out before game two. It was hilarious. He was coming down the elevator. He gave me a foul. Ah. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we need some time off. Uh, we need some time off. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Chucky, man, thank you so much for doing this, buddy. Rest up. Enjoy your summer. I'll be in touch. And, and once again, thanks for everything you've done to Mr. Curfew, buddy. You've been a great team guy for us, and we appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, boys. Looking forward to next time. Up, dog. That was awesome. Uh, thanks to Chucky. You know, at the start of the interview there, you could see, you know, I almost felt like, fuck, maybe we shouldn't be talking to him just yet. It's still a little... Uh, but in typical Chucky fashion, he's been so good to me and you here at Mr. He's Curfew's a pro, his family. He is a pro. Uh, they will be back. Yep. They will be back. So uh, thanks to him. Uh, it was good to just talk to him and get his feel on what a run they had. And you've said this before. He'll look back on this in a couple of years and be like, you know, wow. Fucking right. So it was pretty impressive. So uh, up dog. Fella, that's a wrap, man. That is a wrap that's on a the wrap, NHL bud. season. Wow. Uh, love you, buddy. Love doing this with you. We will be, you know, we will be back on the airwaves a little bit throughout the summer here. But Maxi and Banger boys, thank you for all your hard work putting up with my nonsense. Uh, have fun at the summer league. Don't let A-Hall work you too hard. Um, and to our fans, fucking sponsors, like yeah, you said, we can't you, do it without you guys. So yep. hopefully we bring a little laughter to you guys because we love doing this. This is our little locker room now. Although the paychecks aren't quite like they were every two weeks back in the show, but, but we still get it. We still get out. We, we still, still get out. a little fellow tour here and there. And, and that's what we love. So all the people's, all your support and your time and your airwaves, you know, yeah, we appreciate it. And Princey, our social media guy up there, fucking highest paid guy at Mr. Curfew. Oh shit. He's on the road. Tell your agent to call us Princey. We might have to have a little chit chat here, fellas. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mr. Curfew fan, it's all about you fellas. Up dog. Love you. That was missing curfew. Fella.